it's always good to get one in the middle of the half lap really and then work away from there four would be a bit too many it would look like it had been stitched together but uh, it depends on the width of the plank some of the planks on the transom have got four some have got three you just sort of space them out as to what you think That, and then we just put one little nail in the top of the half lap. Which will probably bend, but... Just helps keep the top in three and three quarters there, so we want three inches. because we left the, a section of the lower plank back past the transom. We can put a clamp on there, pull that in. And so if we just check our measurements on our mould. Let's just go down a little bit. Like it just needs to it's not looking bad. Yeah, so that's our plank pretty much clamped in place. We can start at the bail nail, fastening back and just making sure it doesn't move too far. We'll get back to about here, then we'll fit the after end properly, shaving a little bit off the half lap if we need to, and then we'll fix it back. So we just need to mark the positions of the nails, so with a square on the plank below, about this next row. So we've got about a three quarters of an inch overlap on our plank, so we want our nail to come through the middle of that. We 
drill this one from outside because the mould is in the way on the inside. So just want to make sure we line it up in the right place. And drill through. Then holding our dolly on the inside, just clear of the hole, we can poke the nail in. And you just need a few rows. Sticking the dolly in a shaped block of wood that I then rest against my leg. Or in this case my stomach, up at this height. Find the rove of the hole. Stick the rove on the nail, rove driver on top. Dolly pressed against the head. Hammer it on. Make sure the head's fairly well in. Snip off leaving about a millimetre of nail above the rove. Dolly on the head again. note of the hammer hitting the nail changes when the rove pulls up tight. Much higher pitched ring to it than the It's going to be a bit more tricky because it's in against the mould. If there are any places that you just can't get to the, to the rove or the nail, then just leave it out and fit it at a later stage. There's some nails that are really tight where this mould is. There should be a row of nails, but we'll fit those at a later stage. And we'll just check that we've got the right overlap. It's three and seven eighths, so we want about three and an eighth there, that's good. So we can happily drill those holes knowing we're in the right place. One thing to always bear in mind is the angle of the plank outside is different to the angle of the plank you're drilling through first. And so rather than drill square to this inner plank, it pays to sort of halve the angle, if you like, so that the nail is actually squeezing the two planks together in equal amount. If you drill through square from the inner plank, especially in a, an area of severe bend on your moulds or severe curve on your moulds, then that nail head can be out on the edge of the outer plank which doesn't look very pretty and doesn't do a lot for keeping the planks together.
as you may have been able to tell there, when the dolly comes off the head of the nail, the hammer makes a much different sound, so it's pretty obvious that you're not... tendency to double hit the nail at the end I think comes from when you've got someone outside the boat and someone inside the boat and if they're holding the dolly on the outside they need to know when to stop and move on to the next nail without someone saying okay right next off you go right ready yeah no yeah so a double hit on the nail and as you finish signifies right that's that one done move on to the next one and it does save an awful lot of time when you've got someone inside and someone outside the boat um, and so just you just that's just what you do when you're nailing so I still do it even though I'm sort of talking to myself in a way but there we go it's just the pattern you get into so now it's just a case of trimming up the after end, getting, making sure that fits, everything's right, clamping it up, nailing to the transom and then doing the last half dozen rivets. And so we're looking a similar thing to what we were looking at at the bow really. There's three different pieces of wood coming together. There's the transom, the plank below, and the new plank. And we've got to make sure that they all fit. We can push the plank up into place on the transom and make sure the, the angle of the transom, the transom bevel, is right. Just needs a little clean up there. And the easiest way of doing that is just to use a chisel as a scraper because we're sort of half on end grain there, we can scrape away, take off a little shaving. And then check it again. <laughs> 